Now, power blackouts, also known as load shedding, are one of Africa's biggest challenges. Report on how shortages are putting lives as well as livelihoods at risk. The problem with, um, with the energy within the hospital because the electricity um, is load shedded to the hospital. You have to improvise uh, and use maybe a torch or something like that. Joni to mwimbi ye bwana tumfanyi ye shangwe mwamba wa wokovu wetu Hallelujah to mwimbi ye When we were volunteering in Africa years ago the power would go out in the middle of a surgery a $5000 piece of medical equipment would be rendered useless because it had not been protected against dirty power fluctuations the problems with the local grid that we saw were not isolated to hospitals. Outages were and are a daily fact of life for hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Technology is the key to climbing up the rungs of the ladder of development. And one of the most fundamental parts of technology is energy. Without modern energy, there is no modern economy. It's as simple as that. As a result of outages, doctors can lose power in the middle of a surgery, schools cannot hold evening literacy classes, and villages are unable to pump the potable drinking water that lies right beneath their feet. In the last decade, the increased consumption of electronics has led to a different issue, the proliferation of e-waste. While e-waste only accounts for 2% of what goes in the landfills by mass, it accounts for up to 70% of the environmentally hazardous heavy metals. About 400 million units of electronic waste are discarded each year and only 12.5% of these circuits are being recycled. The heavy metals such as lead, solder, and copper that are incorporated into electronic circuits are toxic, which pose serious health risks to people and communities who seek to manually extract valuable commodities inside the waste products. In the summer of 2009, James Molini, Chris Hammond, Adam Kurzarok, and Matt Byrne joined forces to repair medical equipment in hospitals throughout Tanzania. After successfully developing a backup power source using discarded electronic parts found in the local community, it quickly became clear that there might be more widespread applicability. Their innovation is called the NZ interface, which means powerful in Swahili. The NZ is a low-cost backup power supply that can provide hours of affordable backup power to a developing world customer during a power outage. It can not only provide hours of power to light bulbs and small appliances, but larger devices such as hospital patient monitors, desktop computers, EKGs, and small water pumps. To cut costs, the device incorporates a wide range of recycled electronic waste components, allowing us to not only provide a solution to power outages, but a green solution to environmental waste propagation. The NZ interface integrates used electronic components like computer power supplies and car batteries to provide clean and filtered power, thereby protecting valuable electronics from surges and low voltage conditions. In the event that a power outage occurs, the ENZI interface switches to battery backup mode, providing up to four hours of uninterrupted power to the attached device. Design and development on the third generation prototype is complete, and future R&D on the fourth generation is currently underway, which will be designed specifically for mass production. Waste to Watts is currently establishing the viability of the market through concerted tests in hospitals in Rwanda and Cambodia. In late 2011, Waste to Watts hopes to expand to Honduras, Ghana, and Tanzania. I'm here on the ground in Kigali, Rwanda, speaking with local NGOs, small and medium business owners, as well as healthcare workers to understand the impact the NC can have to them. More than 50% of all the health facilities in this country have no electricity whatsoever. Tanzania, most of the OSIP do. They ask me if there's something like this which can be used for their backup system. Uh, mission organization and every missionary that I know of, I'm confident, would want one of these devices. In Kenya, it's dry season. We experience power failure, and this is a big challenge. The gadgets that can really help experience a lot of breakdowns in, in hospitals and homes as well. And if I am given an opportunity, uh, I personally can buy it. Equipment is, can replace the biggest UPS we know the market. It's for about $40 US. Ah, yeah, wood buy one. That's really cheap. I'm ready to buy one. There's a massive need. Everybody would want one. When can I buy it?